We will say it like it really is. With dignity and respect. Committed to free speech and common sense. Upbeat and entertaining. Straight talking and direct. We may agitate each other and you. Heartfelt and passionate. Thought-provoking, provocative and controversial. And fearless and truthful. Hello and welcome to The Pledge. Right, I want to play the Trump card <laughs> right at the top. Time magazine has asked the president, yes, the president of the United States, to take down this fake cover that's <laughs> apparently hanging in five of his golf clubs. No shame. Unbelievable. <laughs> of course, Trump says it's fake news. But now I feel it's my solemn duty to go public with this picture <laughs> that's hanging in the West Wing of Ferrari Towers. Yeah, yeah. Nick, how could you? <laughs> nah, I don't know. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> On the show this week, Graham says he wants his country back. Nick thinks the Labour mask is slipping. Greg will compare Theresa May to Set Blatter. And June is threatening to sing. So, how many times did you hear the Conservatives use the word austerity during their election campaign? The policy of dramatically reducing public spending has been quietly vanishing from their political rhetoric, from the rhetoric, not from people's lives. Mm. This week, nurses, whom Theresa May told during the election campaign there is no magic money tree, reminded us that the 1% pay cap continues to push them towards poverty. It amounts, they say, to a 14% cut in real terms. Questions over whether cuts to local authorities were a contributory factor in the tragedy of Grenfell Tower refused to go away. Whatever political credibility austerity had is now gone. Mm. With inflation on the rise and wages stagnant, workers are resorting to dangerous levels of personal debt to stay afloat. British people have carried the burden of flawed government policy for too long. Mm. Austerity is dead and the government should come clean before more harm is done. Yeah, for the, the problem is the money has to come from somewhere. Thank God for that. So, although I basically agree with you that I think austerity is dead, and I think uh, certainly the 1% wage increase for people in the public sector yeah. has now gone on for... Yeah. I mean, it's really seven years... 5% over seven years yeah. is ridiculous. It can't continue. Somehow... Well, when the, at, sorry, when you look at inflation, it's 3%, isn't it, yeah, at the moment? at the moment. But somehow you've got to get the money from somewhere. So what we're really saying is you're going to have to increase taxes. The thing is, in my view, and the reason I, I say that um, austerity was a flawed government policy is that there's lots of evidence from economists that there are different ways that we could have handled our economic situation. For example, we could have borrowed money when, when interest rates were really low, when borrowing was cheap and invested in big infrastructure projects that would have stimulated the economy and provided jobs, and we didn't do that. There's no guarantee, there's no way of saying unequivocally that that starving the public sector um, has, was the best way to actually inject money into the economy to get things stimulated again. And if you look Not at true. debt, now we've brought debt down, we've brought debt down, I agree, yeah, but the deficit is at almost 90%, the highest level since the 1960s. You know, we have one of the highest deficits in the developed world. So all of this pain we've been suffering, and it's been, go it's been suffering, been suffered, let's not forget, by people who are the most vulnerable, who are the lowest paid, who are, are the poorest, answer Greg's disproportionately. Question? Are you going to answer Greg's it question? It hasn't solved the problem. Are you going to answer it, Greg's it, question? I agree it hasn't solved the problem, but the thing is, if you are still going to have to get the money from somewhere... Now, I have long been a believer that you've got to increase tax. Taxes. I don't see anything else. I don't think... And that's what, of course, if you look at... The, if you look at Scandinavian countries, if you look at a lot of the European countries, they have kept their public services going because they pay higher taxes. And that's the choice yeah. we've got to and make. I mean, I agree with you. And it's interesting, this week, actually, the British Social Attitude Survey showed for the first time that 48% yeah. of people mm -hmm. support an increase in tax. It's the first time more people have supported it yes. than have yep. supported tax staying the yeah. same. And I think there is a change. I mean, I completely agree with you, Greg, that I think that what we need is honesty in the political debate. I don't think it's helpful for politicians to pretend you can solve problems without finding the money from somewhere. And I think so Labour have done that. Labour have taxes. been honest that we do need to increase taxes okay. to generate more revenue. And, well, and they that, only wanted to reality. increase taxes on the richer Rich, people, yeah. Yeah. which I doubt whether would get you the sort of figures they talked about. I mean, I think we've just got to accept that well, let's if, you want to, if you want to spend more money on the National Health Service, then let's have a 1% mm. increase or let's have a special health tax or something to pay for it. Let's not forget as well but that, they can't that, that raising tax is not... It. Yeah, we'll, we'll come to that. You, you, raising tax is not the only way to generate 
revenue. You could, if economic growth provides more tax as well. Except we have fairly full... It's, it's not that we've got massive levels of unemployment. We've got fairly full employment. So, uh, you know, the, the old Keynesian model was that mm. you, you introduced big capital expenditure projects to actually boost, yeah. to get people into work, which meant yeah. they paid tax, which Spent meant they kept more, things going. Exactly. We've got fairly high, un high employment levels, which makes it harder. It's funny you say that, and <clears throat> June, I want to bring mm. you in, but, you know, it was interesting to hear senior Tories talking about how £1 billion to Northern Ireland would be great for stimulating their economy. So, apparently, you know, Keynesian, ec Keynesian economics seems to work brilliantly when it's a for them. A Tory <laughs> government when it's a, yeah, so they can <clears> find it when they need it. So that's the question. If they're, if they're really serious about this, they will figure it out, Greg. I'm sorry. But, but the thing is, the scale... And we of, cannot the scale, continue this the, way. The problem is, though, the scale of what is needed to, to either, you know, increase tax revenues or infrastructure projects that then mm. create a, st a stimulation, it's a massive... There's a massive gap at the moment between what's needed and what's out there. But then what's and, and, and actually, I think... Well, no, but I think Greg's right. I don't think you can look at it in isolation and say that, you know, let's, let's increase taxes for one group of people. I think there has to be a, a nationwide right. approach to, to if they're going to increase taxes so that everybody contributes. And that is, that is pushing people... Right, have you had enough of your group hug? Come on, then. Come on, then. Time to take off your Peruvian knitted hats. Tell us why nurses should be carrying the burden. No, I've cut your head with Selvig. You're absolutely right, by the way. Uh, and, and you're right. Seven years, these people mm. have been like that. It enough is, is, it is made more acute by that one billion that's been found. But I know Greg wants to speak about that, so I won't steal his thunder. But this is how we solve it, right? Who famously said we can't spend what we don't earn? Who famously said that? Mm -hmm. It's not me, Margaret Thatcher. And she was absolutely right. We can't spend what we don't earn. We have got a lot of money sloshing around elsewhere in the budget that should be redistributed. Mm. What about £17 billion in foreign aid? I know I've banged on about that. I'll give you a new one, then, because you've had enough of that rolling your yeah, eyes. What about what £56 billion pounds for HS2, which is a mm. complete vanity project? Yeah. We should be rolling out broadband across the country, which wouldn't say spend anything like £56 mm. billion. Pounds. By the way, by the time it gets up to Sheffield... Who wants <laughs> to get to Sheffield 15 <laughs> minutes earlier? What the bloody hell are you going to do when you get to Sheffield? <laughs> it's it's get away as a person <laughs> who has businesses Well, I definitely don't want to get there, then, if you're there. No, and we, hope, and we hope you don't come. But I'm, I, I, was well, I'm, I'm, I'm as opposed to Sheffield. I had a great time there. No, I'm sure really. Sheffield. I, I love the people okay, Sheffield. But in yes. all honesty, 56 billion there. Trident. It's 90 something. Trident. No, we need to keep. Trident. Okay. We do. But no, I've but, just found you 90 but, billion quid. But Give all those. But men you're and women confusing first. capital with revenue. But, you, you know, you really yeah. can't confuse the two. I yeah. mean, one of, the, one of the good things about the Labour manifesto this, this time was it actually said there are two things. There's capital over here, which are one-offs, and this yeah. is revenue. And you can't confuse the two and just find great chunks of money. I mean, what, what is interesting is, I mean, you do remember the beginning of austerity where Mr Cameron said, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah. Well, that's not what it's turned out yeah. to be, actually, because well, an awful lot of people, including me, have done pretty well over yeah. that period. Everyone and if you work hard, and if you work well. hard, but no, so not does not so do most of the just people in the hard. public Make sector. So they work hard. Yeah. I, I just oh, want to bring it back to there has definitely been a shift in public opinion. Support mm. for cuts in public spending is now only 29%. That's a real change. I just want to play you mm. what George Osborne said when he told us how much we needed austerity. Just have a listen to this. <clears throat> it is far too soon to say job done. It's not even half done. That's why 2014 is the year of hard truths. There is still a long way to go and there are big underlying problems we have to fix in our economy. More repairs, more cuts, more difficult decisions. Now, you didn't hear the Conservatives using that kind of language before yeah. this election and since the election. Look, you still haven't addressed the great sage of Sheffield's opening <laughs> comment, <laughs> which is where is the cash coming from? Did you read the Labour Party manifesto? No, 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 wait, so you're just endorsing it was that? fully costed. I, I, I do endorse you it. You agree yeah. with that? So I do agree look, with that. Never have the rich paid more in tax. They've never... The, the richest <coughs> portion of the public have never paid more in we tax. We still have and, one of the lowest rates of corporation and you're gonna make tax them pay in the OECD, and, Nick. And, and, and corporation... Of, and, no, 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 and even no, no, the, so proposed, the proposed tax increase, we would still have one of the so lowest So obviously there's personal tax and then there's business tax corporation. But so Nick, they're all going to go up. But, Nick, don't you agree the election result in itself shows us that the public have had enough of austerity? It's done. Mm. So, therefore, this government has to figure out a way to put an end okay, to it. So, so Simple the, as that. She, so, you're just, so and you, just Well, raised... you've just costed it out for them. Well, I've, I've, I've done money it. can no, be found. I agree with you, Nick. You've that costed I think, it out for them. I do think, honestly, it's very important. <laughs> I don't think it's fair to say only the richest will bear more of a burden. I think we need to accept, as a society, if we want to live... Um, in a way where there's a certain level of fairness, we do need to pay more tax. And I think mm. ordinary people are willing to shoulder but a higher that, tax. Would that back what you're saying about this 
it's uh, the 48 percent that are saying actually look yeah. let, let's support yeah. higher taxes and because ultimately i think we do we have to find a way the problem we've got is that the poorest people are living on such a fine line that how can you possibly ask them to pay more in anything i can ease the suffering for now because we <laughs> must move on well that didn't take long did it <laughs> while i never thought it had much life in it Seeing it vanish in less time than the duration of the average British summer was a shock. I refer, of course, to the mask slipping from the Labour Party, as this will go down as the week we saw their true face. Gone was the glasto-loving, group-hugging, copper-promising, <laughs> trident-scrapping, victim-empathising, youth-embracing, NHS-saver, teacher-worshipping, nation-defending look. <laughs> In came the true pro-Marxist, rabble-rousing, cunning and conniving stance <laughs> of the modern-day Labour Party. Hell-bent on overturning a democratically elected government by the means of a class war, large-scale civil disobedience, wave of strikes, whatever it takes. Shadow Chancellor John Macdonald's offensive suggestion the victims of Grenfell Tower, quotes, were murdered, was as egregious as it was false. However, it did serve a purpose. Like a scab, you don't have to pick for too long to reveal the real Labour Party. You just can't help yourself, can you? <laughs> Telling the truth? No, it's a I brilliant know. introduction, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Headline writing caution last week. Rebel rousing. Well, what, what else was there? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take you to write that? I was on the sun. What do you mean, <laughs> just forget it to fiction? How long did it take you to write that? Uh, don't nonsense. tell the producer about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm on the radio, I'm, God, I'm late for that. Let's just do that. Uh, do what, Doris? He does virtually the same every day. Right, so you've not my work. So, <laughs> anyway, what I will say, Nick, yes. uh, as much as I thought what you just read out was a bunch of nonsense, uh, there is a bit of it that I do agree with. Right. Um, in that I do think uh, that John McDonald's language was ill-judged. Yeah. And I actually disagree. I mean, David Lammy's a very good friend of mine. Um, yeah. And I disagree with David's stance on saying that we actually need to prosecute individuals. Because I think the danger around all of this is that's when you get a cover-up. And let's just, for, for viewers who ha are not familiar, okay. and I'll come straight back to you, let's yes. just see. This is uh, uh, John McDonald, Shadow Chancellor. It is filmed by someone uh, using Twitter, so the quality's not great, but he's at Glastonbury. Yep. Let's hear what he says. Is democracy working? It didn't work if you were a family living on the 20th floor of Grenfell Tower. Those families, those individuals, 79 so far, and there'll be more, were murdered by political decisions that were taken over recent decades. Tragically, he was yeah. right on one thing. We now stand at 80, and I think mm -hmm. all parties except it will get... It will due. increase, yeah. So, for me, I agree with you there. I yeah. think it was ill-judged. But I think, actually, what Labour needs to do, rather than using words like murder and calling individuals out to be prosecuted, they actually need to put together a proper report to look at the, the results of austerity. Mm. Let's look at that, because when we start blaming individuals which are likely to be low-level management... That's when you allow people, the whole system, to but get June, away with it. June, language such as that... And it's I agree with you, the language is disgraceful. The thing is, it's not ill-judged, the language. No. It was utterly disgraceful, because what it does is it creates... A, a massive divide. It fuels the anger that already exactly. rightly already exists, exists within within the victims' families yeah. and people living up and down the country in buildings that we now f realise maybe aren't fit to live in. Um, and I think it's I think it's horrendous that that people feel people in such positions as him feel that they can use that sort of language. But I'm we, not interested in the politics. No, but, but, I'm interested but in the Graham, fact that he's prepared to. We cannot deny though that that it is. Tory policy. No, so it's not Tory policy. Something. It goes no. back. This goes Bloody back thirty true. years. This that goes back 30, it, 40 years. You know for a fact Didn't that one help. of the key policies was brought in under Tony Blair's government. All the three major parties have played their role in this sort of Absolutely. housing. When the Lib Dems were in coalition, none of them. And quite frankly, when I saw Jeremy Corbyn going after Mrs May and Prime Minister's questions, when you have still got people picking through the ashes why? trying to bring out... Well, well, that well, was why, bloody why shameful. Why, because why now is not that, the time to score political points. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Can, I just, can I just show Mrs May's reply? Because of I course. think mm. we ought to see what Mrs May said. When, when yeah. to this allegation. What all of those affected by Grenfell Tower deserve is an inquiry that gets to the truth and provides them with the truth and with knowing who was responsible. There are real issues here. We're not going to get to the truth by pointing fingers. We will by calm determination. Yeah.
Uh, my, my problem with John McDonald is when he was an old lefty agit prop MP, <laughs> no one took any notice of him when anyway, he went yeah. on and he said things like that. He is now the shadow chancellor. Yeah. You can't say things like yeah. that because you can't demonstrate it's true as yet. Yeah. You've got to wait for the inquiry, yeah. you've got to wait and see what it says and all sorts of things. I mean, you know, when you look at what's happened over Hillsborough this week, yeah. just this week, that took 25 years. Now, hopefully, this inquiry will come up... I mean, the inquiry changed football. Yes. It was the inquiry, mm. fair, just like King's Cross changed, changed yeah. the... Uh, Tube travel. Tube travel, travel, yeah. Uh, and I, I'm, I've no doubt that this inquiry will fundamentally change housing in this country. But it's not the time to politicise. No, but, but you don't... But I don't... I just don't <clears> believe... I mean, you know, John McDonald's from Hayes and Harlington. I come from there. Oh, yeah. Sure. Let me tell you, it's full of tower blocks. Oh, is he saying that because yeah. they had a Labour council when they were built, they were OK? Yeah. But these... Um, I, I think to politicise this at this stage is pretty, is pretty demeaning. I agree. I don't... I, I agree with what Theresa May said, that I would like to see politicians being grown-ups about this, and this is a long-term problem. Mm. And, actually, um, I do think that Tory cuts austerity had something to do with it. Equally, it was Labour who cut... It was Labour who cut legal aid, which is another factor. So, yes. I think that cuts have a role to play, Effort. but they're not all Tory Effort. cuts. No, that so was, I'm not that, making this Gren a partisan Grenfell issue. Grenfell had an £8.6 million pound facelift. Whatever. How, is that, how is that which austerity? Means, which made how, it... What, 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 that's £300,000 yeah, per four. Because... It was Where's the austerity Nick, there? If you look at... If you look at... If you look at the refurb that they went with, yeah. they went with the cheaper version yeah. that was not what residents as, as asked for. As it would appear for, has Camden, which, as it would, which was Labour, not, as it would appear has Sunderland, was, Labour, not, as, you know, I will go on. It was oh, not sorry, what residents God. asked for. It saved about a million pounds, the if version that, that they went if with, that. if that. Oh. There, this is in a climate where councils were hammered by 40% cuts. I am not yes, politicising this isn't, by that saying that austerity is part but, of the picture. But isn't the answer to what you're both saying the fact that the priorities of what the money was spent on was wrong? Absolutely. Because safety wasn't put it first, was as it hasn't been in, in, in I, other I, I, places. If you, can you let me finish? I, this is so important. Yeah. I agree that this is not just a party political point. Yeah. For me, I would love to see this go into the much longer-term issue about the way that private financing mm. and housing initiatives, which is something that, that Labour was absolutely behind and introduced yes. um, in, in, under Tony Blair. And the failure of proper regulations. Has led to a profit-making yeah. attitude in building social housing, which is and very dangerous. And the disdain we have for the poor in general in society. Well, but I, but just, I just, just, just let me finish. These are all to... terrible generalisations. Mm. Thank you. When you've got something that we need to fully... I mean, it was awful. It was awful. Yeah. And, and Kensington and Chelsea isn't a poor borough. It wasn't affected by cuts. Kensington and Chelsea got a lot of money. It was affected no, by cuts. It was, it's it's no, also but, got a lot of money. But they wanted to keep the surplus, be, But the, what we need to do is know the facts yes. as opposed to all making pronouncements on bits that we don't know necessarily true. What we know is it was a terrible disaster and we need to know why it happened who was responsible? I don't support the language of John McDonald calling no. this murder. I don't think it's helpful, you know. And I'm a lawyer, so I bulk yes. at people using things, legal terms, yes. which have real consequences wrongly. Yeah. However, mm. I don't agree with you that we should... Um, we should avoid thinking about anyone ever being prosecuted. You know, to me, what happened with Hillsborough this week mm. just showed that for family... It, well, it's tragic that it took those families this long to get personal accountability from yeah. people who have real questions to answer. But it also showed that this country should be capable, through due process, mm. of holding people to personal and possibly criminal account if they have done wrong. But and I think that reason, we should be open to for, that. for John McDonnell not to use that language agree, because it's I such a critical time. But I think back to your point, though, Afa, which you've been saying all along, is that the system is what is broken. And for those people who are working in that uh, council and even for the contractors... The problem is the pressure that would have been put on those individuals to cut costs. I agree. And therefore, as we know in these cases all the time, it's some it mid-level person not who or. is scapegoating. Look at Hillsborough. So Hillsborough me, changed we need sport. whistleblowers. Right. You don't, you don't know, know that. You don't... That's what I'm saying. Everybody, everybody's but coming from a political position and blaming somebody. Mm. We don't know. No, but, uh, but we do know that they was, were told to but, cut costs. Oh, we no, know we that. We don't way. actually... We don't know their budget. But what... Remember, my central point was the language that is being deployed, which we all... Which agree. we agree and with no, you on. your friend David Lammy and Diane Abbott... And I disagree with David. ..there's a conspiracy, David. there I are hundreds. And like I said... This is not the time... There David are people watching this... David is a close friend of mine, but I totally disagree with that. It's just wrong. Well, I've agreed with you on that. But I think... I can't help but wonder... 
I, I, I agree with you. I think that was unhelpful, but I can't help but wonder if it's a bit of a distraction to obsess over the language. The point is we need an inquiry. I'm yeah, glad it's happening. Yeah. A judge has been appointed. Mm. I think that's a good development. We do need to be level-headed about this. Well, uh, really as I said, I would like us to look about, about the, the judge. Yeah, there are. I mean, <laughs> well, it's inevitable that the judge is going to come under scrutiny. <laughs> but, you know, last week you told me that the way oh. Theresa May behaved is completely irrelevant, you know, and we should stop judging politicians on their emotional response. But I've been drinking so, again. It's time for me now. Now, look, the Conservative government's deal to buy the votes of 10 Northern Irish MPs by giving them an extra billion of our money is little short of legalised corruption. Of course, Mrs May, <laughs> as leader of the largest party at Westminster, is entitled to try to form a government by making alliances with other parties. But she's not doing it because Northern Ireland necessarily has a just case for the money compared with other parts of the UK. No, Mrs May is doing it because after a desperate general election result, she needed the DUP votes to keep her and her party in power. The one billion is the DUP's price for supporting her. That's the equivalent of 100 million for every one of the MPs. That's more expensive than Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs May has become the set blatter of British politics. <laughs> and I thought I got rid of him when he was finally chucked out of FIFA after spending years doing what Mrs May is now doing, offering people money to keep her in power. Shame on you, Mrs May. Just to clarify, could we get ten Cristiano Ronaldo? Because <laughs> <laughs> then I'd definitely watch Prime Minister's questions. Um, is it a shabby deal? Yes, it is. Is it real politic, Greg? Yes, it is. How does this differ from uh, when the Labour Party was in power? They understandably, and it's the way politics works, they channelled hundreds of millions of pounds to great sleeping cities in the north where their core vote is. They redid Manchester, they redid Leeds, they redid Sheffield, as it happened. How is that in any way different? You always play to your strengths. You always send the money where your voters are. And this, I, I'll grant you this is shabbier, but it's the same sort of no, shabbier. No, it's a, no, it's a lot shabbier. Well. It's Why? a lot shabbier. Why? Because it's, blatant? Bu it's blatant. It's just <laughs> buying votes. It's what, just what, and, buying and keeping votes. the people of Manchester no, no, keeping, with new houses. No, no, That's it not... might be. It might be. Well, thank you. But Northern sir. Ireland uh, needs extra money. It could be that's mm. the case. But that's not the basis of this decision. No. This decision is based on getting ten votes for Mrs May's well, it's party. Also, it's also... I mean, some people would say, and it would be the 42.5% uh, the who voted Conservative, of course, that it would stop Mr Corbyn getting through the door at number 10, but, and therefore it's money well spent. Well, that's not... That's, that's for not the, the electorate to decide yeah. in elections, well, not, well, not no, at but this they're allowed, particular moment. The, the, the unfortunate thing is, I think you're right, shabby, shabby way of doing things... Um, but that is the reality, and it's been, it's, it's been well, much less blatant over the years, but effectively, to use your introduction around football, we've gone from a hung parliament to a bung parliament. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the fact is that I think it, we all look at it and just go, is that how blatant these things yeah. can well, be? Well, they and, and that's the distasteful I, I don't think they have ever been this blatant in British politics. And uh, they've always been like this in America, we yeah. know that, but yeah. they've not been like this in British politics. And suddenly we've seen the reality of saying... I want your ten votes. What do you well, want in exchange? Well, that's what Cameron did with Cleggie. No, no, no. no. What Cameron no, knows? No, the, no. The, no. The what Cameron and Cleggie did was they <laughs> sat down and said, "What parts of this policy could we support, there you and go. what parts can't we support?" Yeah. That's fair enough. Yeah. I mean, that's what coalitions are about. Cold, hard but cash. to give to give to one political party a billion pounds, effectively, to give to the any area they come from. I mean, put it the other way around. Say the Labour Party had done a deal with Sinn Féin mm. to turn well, up... I, I mean, that, you that, that, that really is an extreme. So you Sinn Féin think, don't even turn up. So you think the, DUP, the DUP's background in violence in Northern Ireland is not massively no. different from Sinn no. Féin's? No. Let's not kid ourselves yeah. that this is a pure party that is, that's always believed in democracy. Well, it's not true. Oh, and let's say they'd done a deal with, with the Scottish. You would have been going mad well, if, if, they'd, you, if, if they'd done a deal with the Scottish, yeah. the Scottish by giving yeah. more money to Scotland. Anyone, you'd have gone mad. Anyone would almost think you've been in broadcasting, Greg, because <laughs> you lead me neatly into something I want to play you from someone from the DUP, Nigel Dodds, addressing this very point. Someday, I'd like to think we might publish all of the correspondence and conversations we had in 2010 with the Labour front bench. <laughs> And in 2015, with the Labour front bench, and indeed with the SNP as well. Oh. There's a bit of news. Because some of the full outrage that we have heard 
is hypocrisy of the highest order. I mean, that, hypocrisy, that man, yeah. hypocrisy is right because yeah. it, it, ultimately this goes on and it just that, doesn't go on quite as well. That, that man has now got an A&E &E at the bottom of his garden, which is rather <laughs> good, isn't it? But the, the reality is it is faux, as has every Ulster man. It is faux outrage because if the Labour Party would have done that deal in 2010 or 2015, you would have supported no, that. No, it's I just, wouldn't. It's no, just no, that the no, Conservatives were successful. No, you're wrong. Actually, I wouldn't would have done it. No if it was a deal that said on policy, we'll change this and we'll yeah. change that, which has also happened in this case... Yeah. I mean, the whole triple lock of old pension of the opposition to that has all gone, right? That's fair enough on policy. This is not. It's a bribe. It's a straightforward bribe. It... Here is a billion pounds for you to go back to your electors to say you've got a billion pounds for this area for no reason other than the fact we'll vote for you. So where's the Barnet formula when we need it? Yeah. Mm. Well, Does that come to play? Well, I, I, I've tried to find out more about the mm. Barnet formula, and what I've discovered is... That it's a slush fund and always has been. This is a calculation by which it's worked out. Each citizen of the United Kingdom gets a certain yeah, amount certain of state amount of, funding, mm. whether they're in England well, or Scotland. Well, and particularly Scotland. Scotland. I mean, it is all. interesting yeah. that the people who have shouted the most are the Scottish and the Welsh, yes. saying, yeah. hang on, if they're going to get extra money, we want extra yeah. money. Well, if there was to be a rational discussion and saying there needs to be more money to spend in the more deprived areas, and I think it's perfectly valid for England to say, well, hang on, what about us? Yeah. Or, or parts of England. Yeah. And also, Nick, if this wasn't a bribe, then, you know, mm. Northern Ireland has always had these problems. Clearly then surely this billion pounds should have been in the Tory manifesto. Uh, look, I, I'm, Why is it, it all of a sudden I, I, when I've you need I've always said the... it's shabby. I've not, I've, mm. From the get-go I said it's shabby, and, but and it's just as shabby as other deals. And there is a magic money tree. Yeah, because yeah, where well, did I, this billion I, come I, well, from? I cannot think of another time... Yeah. When this has happened, oh yes, okay, and one, which was when there was an. What about Callaghan? There was a, no, there was a, the, no, there was an ele oh, by-election. There was a by-election. Long gone, gentlemen. There was a by-election. No, there was once a by-election in Hull. <laughs> there was a by-election in Hull where the Labour Party decided to build that bridge across the Grimsby. Oh right, you know, which the is Michelle probably Dubry the Bridge. Yeah, the problem. <laughs> what about Surrey <laughs> County Council, who also got a nice bribe from the Conservatives? Well, of course, that was last... denied, wasn't it? No, and that was when they were going to have a vote. I think that. The point that June's making about it not being in the manifesto is key because mm. I don't want this to sound like, well, I personally don't have a problem with Northern Ireland getting more money. No. Knows they need yeah. it. You know, there's real problems with yeah. um, underdevelopment, poverty, yeah. you know, suicide course, yeah. in Northern Ireland. We can accept um, that. Yeah, and, you know, I've been reporting on, on those. As journalists. I think it's great that Northern yeah. Ireland is getting mm. more money, especially if it represents the end of austerity because we could do with some more money yes. in Northern England and in Scotland and Wales, as we all established. And Northern Ireland already gets more per head than any other part You're of the UK. Money again, you have a nerve. Yeah. <laughs> no, stop it, yeah, what are the chances? What are the chances? Just quickly, what billion? are the chances of the DUP coming back in two years' time saying we want yes, more? Oh, it's a certainty. Yes, it's a certainty, that's Nick. Right. Look, yeah, what I happens after, what I'm, happens not, after I'm not saying it's not shabby, double, no, no, double no, negative. It is answer the question. It is. Do you think they'll be back in two years asking for more money? Years? I don't know that this will last two years. I think it will probably limp through for the two years and then the whole thing will probably dissolve and we'll probably go to the polls. I, I just two think, years, think we just had an thought. election where we saw record numbers of young people voting. Mm. I wonder yeah, how it looks to people the problem. who are that becoming inspired to engage. Because they vote the wrong way. The other thing is. People who are inspired to engage in political process must be watching this and thinking, what kind of so called democracy? Is this? This is this is the kind of thing. If we saw it in an African country, we, we would be threatening to withdraw aid. The other yes. thing is, just quickly, the other thing is as well, though, is, is on, on a serious <laughs> note, what what is the impact of this on the Good Friday Agreement? In yeah, the sense well. that yeah. does that yeah. does that create? More of a rift um, because well, we obviously the Conservatives have uh, aligned themselves. It's quite hard, though, if you're one of the op one of the other parties in Northern Ireland, to make a bunch of a fuss about it because there's a billion pounds coming to you. Mm. What I'm saying is, this is this. We have to behave properly and fairly, yeah. and this is neither proper nor fair. It's just a bung. Yeah. Yeah. Talking so about proper and unfair. Let's go. To... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think they're talking about bungs. <laughs> <laughs> I would have sued you <laughs> big time. Um, anyway, it's me next, and I'm going to explain why I'm still feeling patriotic despite another penalty defeat to Germany. As some of you may know, I've played for England <laughs> several times. <laughs> but I don't like to go on about it. I mean, no. back me up here. <laughs> Now, it's absurd to reduce the Brexit debate to appeals for patriotism. Andrea Leadsom, leader of the House of Commons, said in a TV interview, broadcasters should be a bit patriotic. It was a desperate strategy. What she should have done is defend her position, focusing on the issues and not hide behind the flag, 
Her faux pas, excuse my French, was widely mocked. Hijacking patriotism is a tactic which damages the debate. It implies someone who voted Remain is unpatriotic. That really frustrates me. Brexiteers do not have the monopoly on wanting what's best for all of us. We need to concentrate on the important issues, like the economy and citizens' rights, to make sure we're in the strongest possible position when we leave the EU. That's the patriotic thing to do. I completely agree with you, Graham. And actually, <laughs> are you all so surprised to hear that, aren't you? I actually can't think of a better advertisement for an anti-Tory, anti-Brexit position yeah. than Angie Ledson's helpful comments, yeah. because anybody who is patriotic and believes in our values of free speech, critical thinking, yeah. healthy debate, would watch that and think she sounds more like a Soviet than mm. a British politician, you know? So I think she shot herself right in the foot. And I have to say, I really enjoyed the fallout because she's been uh, healthily mocked by the quote-unquote unpatriotic patriotic press. Even you, Nick, I bet, were a bit tempted no, to... Uh... Yeah, got it totally wrong, and I think it's appalling. I, it's going to be difficult to get a, a good fight going on this one, Graham, I sense, because you cannot have uh, prominent politicians telling broadcasters no. the tone they should take. The whole idea of the, the fact, as Afwood rightly says, that the joy of living in a country such as the United Kingdom is that we have a fairly healthy and uh, robust and Free rambunctious press, press yeah. that can look at government policy, can rip it apart, as Greg just mm. was, and I was particularly vile about Jeremy Corbyn, he was particularly vile about Theresa May. God bless the British media, that's yeah. what we do. Do you think, I mean, the, the, the fact is, obviously there she went in two-footed. I mean, again, we talk about being blatant. <laughs> I mean, she, she, she didn't leave a, le leave a lot to be sort of uh, negotiated on or, or left to judgment. Do you think, though, there is an underlying sort of um, agenda that, that is, is at play as well in terms of... Th 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 this is a more subtle approach to whether you're being patriotic or you're not quite with yeah. us or against I mean, us. I mean, and that, in a way, yeah. is, is yeah. just as, if not more dangerous. Just look at the election campaign. I mean, it's not the first time we've heard the Brexit gang try and claim a monopoly yeah. over patriotism. And I found that part of the election campaign really sinister, the yeah. idea that only voting for Theresa May was the right thing for Britain. Well, you know, that's not how yeah. we do politics in this country. We accept plurality. We yes. accept mm. that you need a government and you need mm. an opposition. Yeah. And that's well, what makes Britain just, work. Just, just to pick up on that point about the, the election campaign, this is uh, what Theresa May said on a couple of occasions during the election. They say we're too small and too insignificant that Britain can't do it, that the British people are not up to the task. In short, they don't believe in Britain. You can't negotiate the right Brexit deal for Britain if you don't believe in Britain. Greg? Well, it's... This has happened over, mm. over the history. I mean, if you run the BBC, you get this all the time. Any time of conflict at the BBC, I mean, right the way back actually to the Second World War, but also certainly at the time of Suez, certainly at the time of the Falklands War, and later Iraq, you get accused of being unpatriotic. You get le I got a wonderful letter from, from Tony Blair when I was running the BBC accusing us of being biased. Mm. And I wrote back to him and said, and, you know, using all the same stuff, and I wrote back and said, look, you can't be the judge of impartiality. Our duty is to be impartial. I mean, remember Mrs Thatcher in the Falklands War went, said to the BBC, you should call them our troops and our boys, not the British troops. Now, that's the point about where journalism differs from mm. politics. Yeah. You, that's what they do and this is what we do. It's inevitable. It will always happen. But in this case, she's just been silly. She's just... She's damaged their own case. She, she has, and I think that Emily Maitlis handled it brilliantly. And, and to me, it just looks like Andrew Ledson's, you know, taken a page out of Donald Trump's playbook. It's like, what planet are we on? You know, this is 2017. The, the idea is we have a free press, so I'm do you, sorry. Afra, do you think we're going to see more of this as, as, as things play out and as Brexit really gets It's funny you should ask me that, Graham, because mm. I've just written a book about <laughs> Britishness, you know, which I never plug uh -oh. on air. Plug! But, oh, plug. <laughs> but I personally, what my book is about is that I think we do have a bit of an identity crisis at the moment mm. about what Britishness is, you know, mm. and to me, the whole Brexit debate is that. It's two different sides of an argument, yeah. both tussling over what does Britain actually mean? Does it mean being it separate mean from Europe? To me, we're a country that's always been outward looking. We've been part of Europe, we've been part of world trade, we've had an empire, you know, we've been multicultural for hundreds and hundreds of years. Our mm. royal family is pan European, we've had Africans here since Roman times. Mm. And I think that we've forgotten a lot of that history, in some cases deliberately, and we've tried to remake ourselves with the help of politicians like Andrew Ledson into and something that, well, that not, doesn't have, great, that he's, doesn't he's, have historical history. He has truth. said on previous pledges, pledges pass him, he has said that mm. you're European. I'm a European. Not British. Mm. 
No, I'm British, well, but I'm also European. Well, I'm English that make as you well. Patriotic? I mean, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm. Well, there are times when patriotism is used. Mm. Politically, yeah. to, to make the to make a case, and that's what's now happening over over Brexit, mm. which I think shows you that they think they're in trouble. Yeah. Mm. Is yeah. what I think. I, I, it's a desperate. Yeah. I think, it's a desperate I think, to play. Well, when you've just run an election that said we need to get a bigger majority so we can deliver the proper Brexit, <laughs> and you've got no majority, <laughs> then you're in trouble. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look at Mrs mm. May and all these clips, and you think. She, she is the walking wounded, isn't yeah, she? She's, she she's is. dead and buried. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Don't you think, Nick? Uh, yeah, she's in, yeah, she's in, she she's in enormous really trouble, which is why she had to do the deal we just talked about. I'll just move it on. You said that you, um, as we all know, you once ran the BBC. They're under incredible attack at the moment for their coverage of Glastonbury and putting out tweets how Jeremy Corbyn, how to ace the crowd or something like yeah. that. Did they go too far? I didn't see enough of it to know. No, I mean, I mean seriously. Well, this, this is oh. Arsene Wenger now. Yeah. I don't, no, from no, where I was standing, no, no, I couldn't no. see. Can I pick up on that? Because actually, it was, Ni it was Nigel Farage that tweeted about that. No, 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 no. It was a Radio 1 tweet. Yeah, no, no, no. The crowd. Oh, there yeah, was sorry. a Radio 1 tweet, and then Nigel Farage picked up on but it. But if Greg can see, it's a bit unfair. Yeah, yeah. It. But there is right, something yeah. interesting that, happened, that has happened, and that is, about, uh, that is about what's happening in the Labour Party, what's happening in the youth of this country mm. that, that I think I'm not part of and, and therefore it's quite difficult to see. There is no doubt. You look at the, the, the analysis of the electorate and who voted for what in terms of age uh, in the last election and the biggest shift was in, I think, 20, 25 to 40, that yeah. sort of right. age group. Mm -hmm. right. And what is interesting is it's, it's followed what happened in the referendum. Yeah. The, 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 again, the old and the less educated... A voted Tory. The only argument, perhaps, that we can, or that I can give you, mm. uh, Graham, if you would allow, is that in many cases, Remainers are going to be more pro-European than mm. they are pro-British. They're going That's to see not that. You're presenting that as, not all, as a dichotomy. Not, that is I mean, true. the whole perspective of someone who sees Britain as part of Europe is that they're, they're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. To be patriotic <clears throat> and British also involves being part be of Europe. And outward-looking and outward-facing. But it's facing. fair to say that some, re some Remainers would veer more towards Europe than they would towards the UK. Yeah, and there's and going Which to, is not yeah. supporting what Andrew Leatham said. No, no, no. Just I disagree with that, and Nick. Not... No, no, I, I don't think you can disagree with that in the sense that there's always going to be extremes at both, at both ends mm. of the argument, aren't there? There are going to be people that remain that would, would put maybe their own business interests, if they're linked into Europe, ahead of the country's interests. So that, in, the, in the, this context, is not as patri not patriotic, because you're doing something for yourself ahead of, ahead of your country, in that sense. But I think Afwa is absolutely right that, that it's far more nuanced th than that. Younger people have only ever grown up in a, in a European, mm. multicultural, yeah. global world. So, that, you know, my own children at 15 and 18 cannot believe that we've entered into this, this sort of route, mm. because they can't, they can't perceive what life without having those freedoms yeah. that they've always grown up with, it would look like. And, mm. and not that it isn't recoverable or retrievable, but it's just, it seems, they sort of look at me and go, why would we do this? Mm. <laughs> That's how they see it. For That's them, how young it seems people like a see step it. back. For Absolutely them. it yeah. does. But it's, but it's, you know, they're patriotic people. They, they love the, the, you know, the things that, that, that Britain stands for in terms of all the, all the bits we've discussed around mm. freedom of speech, equality and, and so, so forth. So, uh, so if... Why did, if that's the case, mm. why would so many people have voted to leave? Well, that age group didn't. They voted over 70% to remain. Mm. And that, that's the problem. Them, and, and if you heard it again now, a lot more of them will vote. Yeah. Mm. After the election, a lot more registered, a lot more would vote. Mm. I mean, I like that interesting uh, comment from one Conservative who said, what we've learned from this is never have an election while the universities yes, are, sti yes, are still mm. are there. Yes. No, but let, let wait for all these... I mean, yeah. so, but, because who could ever believe well, this, this that the Conservatives can wouldn't Canterbury. win Canterbury? Yeah. Canterbury, you know? Sheffield, places yeah. like that. And that's, Sheffield, and, 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 but that shows, you, that shows you again the gerrymandering of politics, isn't it? I yeah. mean, yeah. let's, let's hold it time. when we can get the most votes. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. It's not and like paying somebody ten anyway, a billion pounds. Greg, no I'm going to interrupt you there. Oh, <laughs> I'm not even answering that. Uh, it's me next and panel. I need to take a few deep breaths before my debate. <laughs> Many people who know me well know that I like to cook and can often be found in my kitchen experimenting with new and exciting recipes. My latest is delicious humble pie. <laughs> and its key ingredient 
egg on my face is inspired by Jeremy Corbyn. Stop everything. <laughs> I want to film this. <laughs> this is the one. Keep going, kid. That saved me saying it. <laughs> OK. Yes, for the past year, like many other centrist Labour supporters, mm. I have been calling for Jeremy Corbyn to step down. We cheered when 90% of the PLP turned against him and plotted a coup to depose him. We waxed lyrical about his unelectability and braced ourselves for harrowing defeat at the polls. But oh no, Jezza not only defied all his critics, he also gave Theresa May and the Tories a damn good thrashing. And he may not have won, but he proved it was possible. His performance since the election has been pretty impressive too. His empathy with the victims of Grenfell and his anti-austerity amendments to the Queen's speech is spot on. Now, don't get me wrong, I am still no Corbynista. But like it or not, I have to accept that he does have a mandate. There is a wave of populism sweeping the West, and I would rather the UK went left than right, like the US. Therefore, I might soon find myself reluctantly chanting with the revellers of Glastonbury. Oh, Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs>I thought you'd stolen my thunder, June, with your opening, because I was going to absolutely hammer you for what you said a year or so ago about, about Jeremy Corbyn. But congratulations for being honest and owning up. If only politicians would be that honest. But then you redeemed yourself and gave me an out by saying that he gave Theresa May a good thrashing. Mm. No, he did. <laughs> he didn't. She thought she was going to get 100 majority. Yeah, but she got more than him. I'm not, I'm not, not going to get into the political much. thing, but factually, she, he didn't give her... A good yeah, thrashing. He not did. Forget the yeah. whole reason she called an election was yes. to get a landslide. Yeah, exactly. but, but you can't then say oh, well, it was a thrashing. So that's yeah, just a, that's you, just yeah. a that's yeah. just a fact. Now um, let's look at the results. No, no. All right, let's look, the, let's look at the result. The <laughs> result you, is Greg. he is sitting there as quite a strong leader of the Labour Party, yeah. Yeah. and she is sitting there waiting for the moment when as they kick her out. As a limping leader, it's a very strange. I mean, I'm like you. I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. Use the words. Sorry, back to you, Graham. But you can't use the words "damn good thrashing." She did. I don't see why not. Why not? No, he did. He did it. Look, Sorry, as a journalist, President, I'll tell you, yeah. you can't. Well, yeah. That is not... Well, so, let's, do let's do it another way. <laughs> no, Who no. won the election? D can I finish? No, no, just answer that question. <laughs> well, she didn't, not outright. So, sorry, let's try another way. Who formed the government? Yeah, and it cost her a billion but, pounds but to do it. Who formed the government? In a pretty horrible... Just <laughs> bring yourself deal. to say the C word. <laughs> <laughs> say the C word. Say the C word. The Conservatives in the DUP. Back to Graham. Back to Graham. The Conservatives in the DUP. Hang on a minute. Sorry. So the, what I'm saying, I'm just picking you up on that <laughs> Carry point on, for being Graham. inaccurate. I'm not saying... And, uh, my goodness, what an incredible turnaround oh, can you believe for Corbyn this? to go from such a low rating to, to what he achieved. Look at where but, we were this time the, last year. The, the question for me is, what is it based on? Is it based on, his on the Labour Party manifesto? Was it based on the fact that he, they ran an incredibly popular social media campaign? Okay. Was it the fact that he has become... Suddenly he was so unpopular that he's almost become back in fashion because of that. Can I... So, I spoke to uh, Dawn Butler, uh, who is part of the sort of Corbyn gang, and after she finished rubbing my nose in it, um, what she said was, for those of us that were sort of part of the, the centrist, you know, old Blair Brigade, as it were, what we didn't see that was happening was a sort of a submarine, uh, submarine campaign where underneath the surface there was this sort of groundswell of support that the rest of us didn't see, that the polls didn't pick up. And I think it's back to what's happening around the world, around the West in general, which is this wave of populism. People are choosing the change candidate. And, yes, he didn't win this time, but I think, actually, if there was another election, I don't think the Tories would win. No, I someone, don't. someone said to me the other day, which I think is quite interesting, and I said, no, I, yeah. I was not a supporter of Corbyn, no, and I'm still not. I'm still I, don't, I, think not. It, I think he'd be yeah. terrible as a Prime Minister, if you agree. I think he's a great, I think he's a great campaigner. Brilliant mm -hmm. campaign. Because he's straight, he answers the questions when you yeah. ask them. Mrs May didn't answer any question. But I, I personally wouldn't want, want to see him as being Prime Minister. But somewhere in all this, something quite profound has happened. Yeah. This, this person said to me the other day, you do understand we are on the verge of something as, as radical as what yes. happened in 1945. Yeah. That actually we're on the verge of a sort of democratic revolution. I agree. And I think that could happen. I think you look at what's happened in the polls yeah. since the election, yes. where he gets more popular, she gets less. Yeah. What I don't know is, you know, uh, where... The, there must be... I think you'd agree there's going to be an election within five, you know, oh, quite yeah, soon, no, isn't no, it? Yeah, no, I don't think we'll get more than two. But events, dear boy, something will come along mm -hmm. and he'll trip up.
They, yeah. he, he will. But, but, he will. but during right, the election, wrong. the events, I mean, terrible events, actually should have supported her. Yes, so you know, the Prime him. Minister gains in authority at times in their terrorist Terror attacks, attacks and the yeah. rest of it. She didn't. And that's... That, but I'm not sure it's just her. As I, say, you look, as I said earlier, and you look at this, the age breakdown of who was voting for who. But and we have to, we I, have to well, remind you... She's got the support of old the, people. Just but, briefly, you, you know, June, you, mm. you're, you're heralding as well. The manifesto, independent fiscal bodies, studied that manifesto mm. and said it could not be funded. It was fantasy. Po the only but, thing they didn't say is vote for us and we'll give you a laptop. But, that is the only thing they didn't but, come but out. They did in Northern but, Ireland. But, <laughs> 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 but within the manifesto, but a lot of it please. was costed out. But also, but, let, me, let me finish. I think we mustn't forget... And, you know, I'm like Greg. I'm not sitting here saying I'm some big Corbynist. I'm not. But what I'm saying June. is we mustn't forget. He's got that Trump June, factor June, June, where stuff doesn't June. stick. The Independent Institute of Fiscal Studies says it can't stop. I could probably get elected if I promised to bring an end to Poverty, no, uh, that, like close every other. Food no, Greg, uh, make sure but, that your wife's breasts Greg, get bigger, which is what no, Boris Greg, once promised, God, Greg, and you'll drive a BMW. But, but That's Greg, what Boris once said. No, I'm Greg, Greg. He's not Greg. I'm oh, sorry, Greg. No, no, you, I'm had, Graham. you had to Nick. go there, Nick. Nick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can I just come in? I think, I, think, I think there's a few people eating humble pie. I just mm. want to. Are you eating it? I, I'm coming for that. I just want to show you the incredible change of heart among the parliamentary Labour Party. Have a look at this. And, uh, and Tom Watson, who now, as you saw, was at the front of that, that happy picture, this is him a year ago. Standing <laughs> in a barren wasteland of mud, this is not a metaphor. What a difference oh, a year the makes. contrast. Great. It's, it's become pop star politics. <laughs> it really And that's has. what you've got to be careful of, because it is based on popularism. I've been banging on for years that manifestos should be legally binding. We'll have that debate another day, but... I've, I just think that you can't promise no. people stuff that you can't, you can't deliver. deliver. But, 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 but can I just, can I just, can I just finish my point? Like June, you know, I've sat here and said, I don't think Jeremy Corbyn is electable. He didn't get elected, but I do think that I, like so many people in the media and elsewhere, underestimated yeah. him. I've always, and I've said this here too, I've always really respected and liked Jeremy Corbyn. He's a person of integrity, integrity. complete consistency. Oh I think that is one reason young people really relate to him. He's the anti-politician. He doesn't say what you want to hear. It's not polished. It feels like it's real. And I think that's what people are craving in politics. So I can completely see why they're latching on to him. I mean, Nick, you're talking about their manifesto like it's the first time a political party has ever been a little matter. bit that is ambitious with promises. That is a, but, no, that's, every political but, party but, does that, every election. But just to add to your point, I think it's not only about underestimating Jeremy Corbyn, I think it's also underestimating how much people are ready for change. Okay. Um, anyway, I have a, a fun video to show you, ah. so let's look at some of these uh, Corbyn fans. I feel like I am here to see a rock star, because when he went past in the car down there, I got as excited as I would if I saw, like, Dave Grohl through Why is that? Why I felt like we were so close to Jesus. Um, it's, I've never been politically engaged, but he just gets young people, he gets us. He's all about love, he's just a hippie. That's why Glastonbury does. And he seems like a decent bloke. Can I just say, it's lucky that it's Corbyn with those sorts of fans. Can you imagine if this was Clinton or Trump? We'd be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> it could this have is, got really messy. This is the great <laughs> Labour Nirvana of Glastonbury. Oh. Cheapest ticket? Do you know the cheapest ticket? How much? 230 quid. People uh, save not, up not all year. Not that I've ever gone. Not that I've ever gone. And you can't get them. No. And you can't get them. Yeah, so they're real social. You know, I've, I've been... Uh, well, of course, Jeff, he ran the BBC. Oh, the BBC the moved down there. I, I had the great advantage when I went is that you could use the BBC toilet. Yeah. To the, <laughs> and showers. The, yes, that's the good. The worst thing about Glastonbury is the toilet, yeah. without any, any doubt at all. But let's just go back a bit. Mm. If you look to the election manifesto, the Labour Party election manifesto yeah. in 1945, okay. and you'd said, we can't possibly afford that, it can't be done, it was all done. It yeah. was all done. And yeah, I think yeah. the same applied here. You might have had to tax people more, more than they were saying. You might have had to... But actually, it wasn't that radical a manifesto. It's only radical compared with the years we've had of, of middle of the range or an austerity. And before that... You know, so that comes back to Graham's Blair point, which is you, if you're going to say you're not going to tax the rich or you are going to do this in your manifesto, you surely should be beholden to point the, the points that you make. Well, I just think it's so important because, you know, that's, that's the only clue you've got. Unless you're voting purely on personality, and that's what I worry about, is this becoming personality-driven, so it's more presidential than it is about politics and about um, 
real deliverables. You say that, Graham. Theresa May ran an entire election oh, campaign that's why she saying failed. vote for no, 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 me. No, no, that's why she failed. I know, but I think that is the trend in politics now. I don't think that's just something that you can associate with Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, I agree. No, 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 not at all. I agree, I, I, I agree I, that it's the not... The trend I'm talking about. But, I mean, talking about but at the same time, I think we should all be celebrating, including you, Nick. And the reason is, you know, <laughs> the, we sat here so many times before the election said it is not good for democracy to yeah. have no opposition. Yes. We had a Conservative government that basically had yeah, no effective well. opposition. This is where they went wrong. Yeah. No, this is what you wanted. You know, yeah. careful what you uh, wish for. Nick, we now have a strong, healthy opposition. I'm going to be an impartial broadcaster. No, 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 no. I'll leave that to Jon Snow. <laughs> I'm going to call time on this, on this discussion. Right, it's time for Straight Talker of the Week. Now, sometimes the language on the pledge can get a little bit... How shall I put it? Neanderthal? Yeah, that's you again. We all know who it is. But according to a professor in artificial intelligence, swearing, Nick, is actually good for you, right. Greg. Here we go. I'll share it around a bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dr Emma Byrne says, I argue using peer-reviewed science, whatever that is, that swearing is both big and clever. It's likely to have been one of the first forms of language that we developed. And since then, it's been helping us to deal with pain, work together, manage our emotions and improve our minds. So, for that insight, Dr Emma Byrne, you are this week's Straight Talker of the Week. Which is marvellous news, because that means next week I can call Nick... <laughs> <laughs> of workplace harmony, Nick. <laughs> You're a total <laughs> I say <laughs> all that, guys. But I never thought my language would be so... <laughs> I never thought I'd be seen as refined, but now I'm working with you exactly. lot. God. So, back to caveman. You can imagine yeah. being, <laughs> being whacked by a... By well, a... the caveman whacks his foot... <laughs> you know, you can imagine the language. I refuse it? to partake in such filth. So. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. See you next time. You <laughs> <laughs>